Aquarius, this is your week ahead astrology forecast by Astrology Motivation from Born Without Boundaries. Welcome guys, my name is Michelle and in this video we're going to go over the major planetary aspects and transits and how they impact your natal sun, which means how they play out in your daily life. So this is a week ahead forecast, so the week is May 10th to the 16th. You want to know what I'm looking down? I'm looking at my notes. I always look at my notes. <clears throat> Aquarius, I'm going to break uh, the whole zodiac sign of Aquarius, which is a total of 30 degrees, into three sections, three different decans or groups of 10 degrees. If your natal sun is between 0 and 9 degrees Aquarius, you are Aquarius 1. If your natal sun is between t uh, 10 and 19 degrees, you are Aquarius 2. And if your natal sun is between 20 and 29 degrees Aquarius, you are Aquarius 3. If you don't know where your, what degree your natal sun sits at, that's okay. Because I'm going to do comparisons and do correlations between uh, the degrees and the dates. I'll do estimates. Um, they're not as accurate as they could be, so the best way is to get your natal chart, but if you don't have one yet or you don't want to get one, that's okay. You don't need it for this reading, as I will be correlating those dates so you'll be able to just know your birthday. But if you're really into astrology, get your natal chart because that is always where everybody starts, and it is fascinating and amazing, uh, amazing study of life. So... We're going to start really broad Aquarius like we always do. Uh, the things that are going to impact everybody if there's anything really big happening. And there's no really big transits that are happening this week except for one. And we should all breathe a sigh of relief at least by the end of next week. Um, and there are a few major aspects in, this, in, in the cosmos that are going to be impacting everybody. And we'll talk about how they're impacting you specifically. And then we're going to uh, focus on those things that especially Aquarians should be conscious of. Um, and that is where your ruling dignitaries are and what's up with them. And then we'll break things down into the decans, okay? And a lot of things are transitioning between the decans this even though they're not uh, transiting zodiac signs they're transiting the decan so I highly recommend that you watch the whole reading because one thing could be affecting you in the beginning of the week but not at the end of the week so the big stuff that's happening well mercury goes direct on the 15th woo woo but we won't feel it until the end of next week so about the 20th 21st we'll actually feel mercury actually starting to solidly move forward right now it's kind of stationary it's not going look it doesn't look like because it's never really going backwards but it doesn't feel or look like it's going backwards but this is the time when you could get the biggest whiplash so just an fyi at least mercury is out of retrograde but we won't really be able to enjoy it for another few days afterwards um we also have the sun conjunct uranus it was in perfect conjunction at 18 degrees taurus on the 9th but for the rest of the week the sun will conjunct will be in conjunction to taurus uh, between a two and five degree conjunction so that's pretty tight what that brings is um well that directly involves you because uranus is your ruling dignitary and it's got the sun on it so the illumination of the weirdness the illumination of the um of the ingenuitive the illumination of the brilliance and fantastic discoveries can be made this is very like genius level brightness um, as well as curious things coming to the surface and people being being curious about different things or the unusual isn't so unusual it's more exciting so this is actually really nice energy but we have a kind of difficult energy along with a very complacent energy that makes me feel something is building and those two energies are <clears throat> Pluto is Jupiter is square to Pluto. Jupiter is also square to Mars. Pluto is in opposition to Mars. And because Jupiter is conjunct the North Node, it's also opposite the South Node. This means that there is a grand cross in the sky, a big old square that is really like, it feels like being put in a compressor because there's so much energy that like, like it's soup, like a supernova implosion. But then we have a grand trine between Venus, Saturn, and the South Node which is a comfort zone, this sense of, yes, I really know myself, I really like it, I feel beautiful here, I feel good here, you feel safe there, you feel complacent there, you feel comfy there, 
but guess what we're supposed to be moving forward where Jupiter is conjunct that north node so this kind of lackadaisical versus that compression could actually really throw something into motion we are looking toward a new moon on the 19th but this by the time uh, Venus will, Venus is out of this grand trine with Saturn but um, Pluto square Pluto's position with Jupiter is not going to end until June 15th now Mars the Mars the Mar Mars participating in this will end in the next two weeks but Jupiter square Pluto is going to last through June 15th so but I think the major combustion and kind of push is going to happen over the next two weeks. So let's let's wait and see because this is a, like a high pressure zone. Let's put it that high pressure to get out of your comfort zone. It's we know it's comfortable. We know it's cozy. That's really wonderful and awesome. But now you got to get to applying that to the future you, not the past you, um, and that's for all of us. So let's dig into where your ruling dignitaries are. Um, your ruling dignitaries are Uranus, which is your modern ruler, Aquarius, and Saturn, which is your traditional ruler. But don't rule it out because it still impacts you. We have uh, Uranus in uh, Taurus, 18 degrees Taurus, and it is conjunct the Sun and semi-square to Venus. So Uranus wants a change. There's an oddballness here that wants a difference, especially since Uranus is in Taurus regarding financial situations. It's almost like in some ways we're rooting for the underdog, but there's so much complacency with how things are that the only way to break through is kaboom. And I think Pluto and Jupiter are working on that. Just to let you know, Saturn is part of a grand trine. So old Papa Saturn is feeling real good because he's got Venus on one arm and South Node on the other. And there is a harmony and a coziness here. Saturn is also sextile to Mercury and the North Node. Whoa. So there is looking forward, right? Somehow. But Mercury is still in retrograde. So I think there's discussions that are being had that need to be had. There's serious talk, serious discussions, and discussions about legalities. I don't know what those discussions are, but in some ways they might be looking backward instead of forward, at least till Mercury goes direct and after that new moon on the 19th. So we'll see what happens, but somebody thinks they're in a really good, good spot right now. And Saturn is very comfy, very cozy. Um, and that could only be good for you. Um, let's go into your decans. So if your natal sun is between zero and nine degrees Aquarius, your Aquarius one, um, how would this equate to dates? January Aquarians, basically. The, from the 22nd of January to the 30th, of January 31st maybe is um, first decan Aquarians let's do it that way um, so your natal suns are conjunct to Pluto because Pluto is at zero degrees Aquarius Pluto will soon go into retrograde but it won't retrograde that much you guys especially if you're on the cusp of Capricorn and Aquarius you will remain in uh, conjunction your suns will re your natal sun will remain in conjunction with Pluto what does that mean dynamic life change to your personality to who you are and since Pluto is in Aquar Aquarius who you relate to what your political beliefs are what your social beliefs are what your social circle is major changes that come from you because the sun is involved this sense of I am dynamically changing and this is a natural change. This is sort of like you were a caterpillar, you're not anymore, you're becoming your butterfly version. That's what it is. It's like it's like Aquarius 2.0. So permanent changes to your life over the next couple of years. Your natal suns are sextile to Neptune as well, which means there is a sense of visionary. A vi like a visionary and extreme creativity and it's through this extreme creativity that you're probably transforming yourself also once again because Pluto is sextile to Neptune this is a sense of getting in touch of that with that God space and making changes in ways that we've never changed before because we're taking it right out of the imagination so bringing in new concepts and baby basically in some ways tearing apart that sense of what is right and what is wrong socially and imagining up something different so I don't know how that impacts you but feel free to let me know these are long-term transits um, but because Pluto is in such a kerfuffle 
with Jupiter and Mars, it's more intense. And there's a sense of if you're really restless and relentless and you're tempted to be ruthless, you know why. Please don't let yourself be ruthless. That will create really bad karma, really bad dharma. <laughs> yeah, because Pluto rules dharma. It will chase you into the next life. So be relentless and be tenacious and don't give up. But don't let your morality or ethics slip. Um, we also have a lot of squares here. Your natal suns are square to Mercury, square to the North Node and South Node, and square to Jupiter, of course, because that's what's happening to Pluto. So what's happening to Pluto is happening to you. This is major tension, and you're feeling like something is about to pop because it wants to, and honestly, you're going to have to let it because you're not going to have any choice. Um, Aquarius 2s. Um, Aquarius, so, no, 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 you know, let's go back. Mercury is in Taurus, so something could pop there in terms of legal agreements or things that you're signing or discussions that you're having or information that you're finding out with regards to your finances. Um, the North Node is there too, so definite dynamic changes are going to come from these squares, so learn. They're educational opportunities, even though they're frustrating as heck. And Jupiter, expansion and growth moving from Aries eventually into Taurus, but this week it's in Aries. So maybe major dynamic changes to your body or your sense of self or your self-worth. So now let's go to Aquarius 2s. Aquarius 2s, you've been in a very long-term um, aspect to Chiron, sextile Chiron. But on the 16th of this week, so the end of this week, you could feel really, really emotional because of all the stuff that you've been through and, and really feel impassioned, like emotionally impassioned about how you've suffered and make it a major bout of empathy and compassion on the 16th because the moon is going to conjunct Chiron. And because it's sextile to your natal suns, this is compassion, open-heartedness, and fighting for the underdog. We also have a square. You guys are in a square to Uranus. Now, that's also long-term, but, but there's a conjunction. The sun is adding a, a new energy to it, so it has, it has shifted. So now your natal sun is also square to the sun. Well, not exactly square to the sun, but there is an energetic exchange between the sun and Uranus. So there's a sense of oddities coming to life, curiosities coming to light, um, changing the way you feel about yourself or um, maybe clashing with uh, like get, getting these like new curiosities or or you know wondering about new just new things that is clashing with your old sensibilities of who you are ultimately though it is a growth period for you Aquarius twos so Aquarius I'm sorry Aquarius threes I'm sorry Aquarius twos your birthdays would be probably like the first 10 days of February. February 1 could be could be some years the 31st through the 9th also could be the 1st through the 10th. So say the first yeah, say the first 10 days, say up through the 9th of um, February. Aquarius 3s. You guys would be the 10th through the 21st or maybe the 11th through the 21st. Um, actually some yeah, some sometimes I think February 19th is the cutoff for you guys, right? So it might be the 9th to the 19th um, Aquarius season because I know Pisces begins Pisces begins somewhere around the 19th. So depending on the year, it will toggle, but that's about where your birthdays would be. Um, your natal suns are sextile to Jupiter. This is extraordinary energy and you should just sit back and enjoy it. There is major like combustible energy that Jupiter is involved in, the fact that it is gonna open up doors and opportunities for you, probably by changing people's minds about things and forcing them to look forward. These doors are gonna open for you, enjoy it, because it'll be sextile to your natal suns for the next like week, week and a half. So this is a very fortunate and oppor opportunity filled week for you. Yeah. However, this week, your natal suns are also square to the sun. Now that can just take a toll on how you feel about yourself. And since the sun is conjunct Uranus, there is a sense of feeling weird or feeling strange about what's weird and strange about you. A little bit of low self-esteem you could be struggling with. 
but that sextile to Jupiter is still going to be there. The only caveat is you might not feel good enough for the opportunities that are coming to you. Thank you for coming. I'm glad you're here for this message. You are. Take them anyway. Say yes anyway. Because in another mindset, without that square to the sun, you'd be just fine with this shit. So believe me when I say, yes, the opportunities are really meant for you and you really do deserve them. I love you guys so much and I hope that you'll join me for your week ahead um, uh, tarot card reading for Aquarius over on Born Without Boundaries. Please, before you log off, like this video and subscribe to the channel and help us grow over here on Astrology Motivation. Trying to reach 10,000, guys. I love you so much and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, Aquarius.